What's up, y'all? Today we're going to be going over the very basics of Patcher. So if you've never used Patcher before after you've seen this tutorial, you're going to know what it is, how it works. Um, and the most important thing is how do I get past these early hurdles? Because Patcher is super powerful, um, but there's like one big drawback to it, which is it's hard to make the knobs do exactly what you want them to do. Um, so we're going to focus on that last because that's the hardest part. That's the most complicated part. Um, but then I also have two good tricks that I think like if you know these and, and can use them in patcher, you're going to be like 10 times better at do, getting it to do basically what you want it to do. Um, and that is how to frequency split um, really quickly and easily. Uh, and also how to create a envelope generator based off of the any any audio input that you have that can take that input and modulate a parameter with it. Um, so there I used it to make a little reverb gated thing uh, and then the frequency splitter there is to take the sub out of the reverb So I'm not I'm only sending the mids and highs into the reverb. We're gonna go over that stuff first um, But we kind of got to talk about how to make a patcher Thing in general. So let me just show to start like what this patcher rack is actually doing and that is taking shitty inputs So we have like a little growl bass here Which that's god-awful run it through this patcher Makes it nice. Same thing with this vital patch here. Takes a little metallic hit thing. Makes it really big and punchy. So from there, let me just go ahead and build a patcher from scratch. So um, the first thing is this is the signal flow. If you attach two of these, that means your audio is going from one to the other and you control how much the input is being sent through there or like what the volume or gain is there. So the first thing I'm going to do here is add an OTT, an OTT, and a fruity fast distortion um, and then I'm going to disconnect this from here and what we're going to do is we're going to send the input into an OTT that's the yellow thing is usually an audio input um, into the distortion into another OTT and then out of the plugin and then from there what we're going to do is link up a couple of our uh, parameters here so I'm going to go in I'm going to get the threshold low the threshold medium or mid, I guess, and threshold high. Uh, and do that on both of these. And then I'm gonna go into my fruity fast distortion and you can kind of easily set up what you want to uh, modulate here or change with your knobs. Uh, so you just right click and activate it. And then we have our two, our preamp and our threshold there. And then I'm also gonna do this uh, type switch. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is go into my surface and we're gonna start adding some inputs here. So I'm gonna right click go down here and we're just gonna get a couple knobs so it doesn't matter too much for this I'm gonna select this change the size to pretty big um, and then I'm just gonna duplicate it twice and that'll be our low mid high um, one of the things that's useful too is to turn the grid on and just set it to whatever you want it to be and then you can kind of line these up nice um, and then I'm gonna duplicate this again and I'm gonna change it to a new type of button or a new type of um, knob and then I'm gonna duplicate it again because that's gonna be our distortion controls and then lastly, I'm gonna go in here and add a button. So it doesn't really matter what kind I have here, but let's get a better one than that. That'll probably be better. Uh, and then you can also click and drag to change the size in case you wanna do that. And then we're just gonna go in and change all the names. So I just right click it and rename them. And then I can go in here into the properties thing and change the font height to like 18. So it fits, there we go. Okay, so now I have a couple things, and as you can see here, I've had a bunch of little red things pop up. And now I can go in and just link the red uh, parameter to the red input value there. So now I have three different knobs that all control different parameters in here. So if I go into my surface and I change my low, it's going to change the low of not just that OTT, but also this OTT. So both OTTs are getting uh, changed together. And so then the next thing I want to do here is set it to where the default on my knob here uh, doesn't reset to zero that it resets to 50% so the quickest way to do that is to go into another parameter type in 50% copy the value there and then go in here and paste the value to 50 for each of those and I think I'll also set my preamp to default to just an arbitrary position so we'll say right there for the preamp and then the threshold I want it to default to 100% and now if I click this cogwheel icon, it brings up the red stuff in the grid again. And now I can just go in and say set to default value. And you can see those little green dots are changing their position. Um, so now anytime I change these knobs, if I want to just quickly reset it, I can do that. So now I have the basic setup where my knobs all do with what I want them to do almost because there's a, a little bit more technical stuff that we're going to get into at the very end. But now I have like the basic setup of a 
thing. Uh, and I'm just going to go in here and do something that I know works well, which is turn the depth down on this second OTT. That way it's not getting way over compressed. There's a little bit of uh, wiggle room in the dynamics there. Um, so now let's add something that's going to be a frequency splitter. So I'm going to go in here, pick out frequency splitter. And as you can see here, I've, I've grouped a little um, tab in my plugins thing where you go into the effects uh, tab, create a new folder. And I'm not going to show you how to do that, but you can create a folder and add a couple flagged effects to it. So I have my patcher one that holds the frequency splitter, the formula controller, the XYZ controller, and then patcher. That way I can just really quickly add any of the uh, effect things that I need by just going in here and saying, I want a frequency splitter. So the next thing we're going to do is add a reverb that can take any input that I want. So I could send the dry signal into it. But in this case, I'm going to send the first compressed signal without distortion into it. Um, and then I need to go in here and check my output. So if I go in here and click send one as an output, then I have two different audio outs. One is going to be the main output and I'm going to take the, and I'm going to take this connection away and change this to be that connection. So now I'll be sending the dry signal or the main output from my OTT into my distortion. And now I'm also going to take the send one that I set up there and send it to the reverb and uh, just have that routed to there for now. And so now I can go in here and I'm going to get rid of one of my bands there. So I'm going to get rid of the high band, push the mid high frequency up or the mid band up. And now I'm going to set my mid to output to one. So it's sending to mixer track one, send one there or send one is what it's called. Um, and now I can take that and I could like route it to my output. And if I turn the other signal off, so the signal that goes from here to here to here to here to here, I can turn that off right here. And you can see I'm just just getting that reverb signal from the from the highs now. So that's a quick way to frequency split. And you can use that however you want to. So now that we've set that up, let's create a volume envelope that's based off of an audio input. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and on my side chain section, um, I have a thing called Fruity Peak Controller, or everybody has Fruity Peak Controller if you have FL. And what I'm going to do with that is take the OTT output, or let's say this output right here, so the thing that we're also sending into the Fruity Fast Distortion, um, and I'm going to use that to create a modulation. So the thing I need to get here, instead of an audio output, which is like the signal, I want to send one of the controllers. So I'm going to pick the peak controller here. You can do peak and LFO together, peak alone or LFO alone. And I'm going to do peak alone. So that's just going to take the audio <coughs> signal there. And I wish you could set this to modulate the gain directly, but you can't do that. So I'm just going to have to unlink this and add a fruity send right here. And now I can take this parameter, use it to modulate the dry volume in here, so that's this. And now whenever there's audio being sent into here, turn that off real quick. It's gonna modulate my dry. Uh, and then you can go in here and just change the peak. And let's get a signal sent through there so you can kind of hear what this is doing. Now this is sending the audio into here, the audio out, and we're modulating the dry signal. And I'm going to go into my reverb, turn the dry off, make it just be early reflections and wetness. And now I'm going to go into my Fruity Peak controller and just kind of adjust and adjust my decay speed. So on this decay, it's one of the only things that I've ever seen to do decay like this. But this is the speed of the decay. So this is really fast decay and slower decay. Um, so that's how that works. And then you can change the tension a little bit. I'll make it rounder. And I might even be better off sending that signal into my OTT as well, and then sending that to the out. Now I can go in here and just make a couple little changes in here. Maybe increase the gain. And now you can use that in a lot of ways, and you could even go in here and turn off the peak section and instead use an LFO. So like set your base point there, turn the volume of the LFO on, change the tension, change the speed. But you just have to go in here and instead use the LFO output to control that instead. 
We'll turn the speed up quite a bit so you can kind of see what that's doing. And now we have like an automatic parameter change there. And so now before I end this one, let's talk about the most dense, not fun topic, which is how to get knobs to do exactly what you want them to do. So here uh, I have the end gain that is going to be my modulated parameter here, and I'm going to link a single knob to it. Um, but I want this knob to do a specific thing, and that is I want it to not start at zero, right? But I don't want to only be like limited to using this knob from the 50 point and above, right? So I want this knob to go from um, zero dB right here up to uh, positive 35 dB. And so there's two different ways to do that. I'm gonna show you in both. So Fruity Z controller is one way. Uh, and the way that this works is ignore everything but the X parameter here. You can basically take an, a value and remap it pretty quickly with this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the input mapping here. Um, and so for this example, I want it to, when the input is at zero, uh, to 100%, so I don't need to change that. And we're going to be doing the X here. Uh, I want it to change the output mapping. So I want it to start at 50% for the output mapping. And then I want it to slowly increase to higher values. So I kind of have like a range of motion here. So if I take this, go to the inputs here, select the X value as an input, and then have the output be the X value. Now I can go in, change this, put this to here. And as I change my X knob, not only does it go only from the 50% point and up, but it also like, if I'm slamming the signal super hard, um, it kind of gives me more freedom to have like wiggle room down here, right? So a lot of value difference between that and that. Especially if I pull the threshold down. Now I can like have slight adjustments in this beginning section. And then when I get to the end, we're adding like five decibels at a time in this range. So that's the quick way to do that. Uh, and so lastly, I'm just gonna show how a Fruity Formula Controller could be used to set a button up that switches between two things and uses two different knobs. So if we go in here, get Fruity Formula Controller, um, I'm gonna go in here and set my input parameters to parameter A, parameter B and parameter C. And then on the outputs, you only have one output value. So we're gonna be using some things to do some math logic. If you do programming, this is gonna be useful to you. If you don't do programming, this is so much trouble that it's probably best to just avoid it. But if you wanna learn, go for it. You can definitely learn this. It's not super difficult. It's just very difficult. It's not impossibly difficult, um, especially if you're you know math minded. Um, so what I want to happen here is I'm going to use an if statement. Let's go look at how if statements work. So it's going to be if A, um, B, or else C. So that means um, if this A value is following this logic here. So let's say if A equals 1, then use knob B or the value of B. But if A doesn't equal 1, you see. So the way that this should be set up now is I'll link my button here. So my A or B button, or my B or C button, I'm sorry, um, should control which of these two knobs works. And if we link this to here, hopefully now, using this logic, and you can always hit compile and make sure it compiles. If you do something that doesn't compile, like let's say you have input in here, you're going to see, oh, that's not right. And um, saying, unvalid identifier that so you want to compile it compiled okay good stuff now when I go in here um, I should be able to change my value with B but not C but when my buttons off B does nothing and C does something um, and you can do anything that the fruity XYZ controller does you can do it in here it's just harder and you have to know the math for it Um, so what I would recommend is using a, learn a couple of the logic gates and then use Fruity Z controller for all of the like increment value changes. So, and so that's going to do it for this one. Now, hopefully you got enough information that you can go and use Patcher without getting too hung up on different stuff other than probably Fruity Formula controller. 
Um, I'm gonna be releasing a bass sample pack in the next week or so that's 300 different bass sounds and 100 different glitch and effects sounds. Uh, that'll be 15 bucks over on Gumroad. If you're a Patreon subs subs supporter, subscriber, whatever, go over there before you go buy the pack because there's gonna be a discount as one of the uh, bonus goodies this month. So thank you for watching, hopefully. Now, when I make patcher videos in the future, I don't have to explain everything as I go and you can kind of like have a bit of knowledge to go off of. So thanks for watching. I will see y'all in the next one. And here's a couple of the sounds from that bass pack so that you get, you get an idea of what you might be buying there. It's a future rhythm. That's the free version, uh, post dubstep. So some decent stuff there. Thank you for watching and I will see y'all in the next one.